I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and this is potentially the most important new AMG product in a decade. Obviously, this isn't what you think of when you think AMG, and yet the GLB 35 is gonna bring a lot of people into AMG ownership, which who knows, could lead to a C63, E63, GLE 53, something like that in future. This is a bit of a gateway drug, and thankfully, it's actually pretty good as well. It's not just slapping an AMG badge on a mainstream Mercedes-Benz product. What this is, is a GLB. That's Mercedes-Benz's compact seven-seater. I mean, it's not that compact. This is pretty much a medium SUV in terms of actual dimensions, but it is a lot smaller than something like a GLE or a GLS, which it looks a little bit like here in the flesh. Now, AMG have basically done a in-depth tune and a bunch of hardware changes to one of Mercedes' own two-liter turbocharged petrol engines to create this 35 series vehicle. But as we'll find out when we take the GLB 35 out on the road, it's really the ride and handling package this car offers, which elevates it above most of its small seven-seat and even five-seat rivals. Now in today's video, we'll start by jumping inside and checking out the interior, then we'll have a look in the back seat and the boot before taking the GLB 35 out on the road. But before we get started, make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell. Jumping into the front seat of the GLB 35, there's a nice mix of Mercedes-Benz's contemporary interior design language, a few hints of the G-Wagon, which is kind of cool, and also some touches from AMG that make it feel a little bit special and a bit elevated above the GLB 250 with which this shares a lot of components. Those AMG bits and bobs include this steering wheel, which is a pretty serious item, perforated leather here on the sides, leather on the top with a little zero degree notch, which is pretty cool. Manatino switch for the drive modes, which is very nice indeed. And then some customizable switches over here that you can use for the exhaust, you can use for the dampers, stability control. So, you know, it feels like a kind of like an, an F1 wheel in a massive form, I suppose, but that's kind of a bit way off. But you know what I mean? It's a cool steering wheel. Metal paddle shifters, that's always nice. And then heaps to look at on the dash. We've got these big chunky kind of motifs in these grab handles shared with the G-Wagon. We have these aircraft style air vents, still liking those a lot, even though we've seen it done for a long time now. Big dual pane screen here, twin 10 and a quarter inch screens. This one's a touchscreen track pad, track pad on the wheel. This one's controlled by the right track pad on the wheel. Now the software is very in depth. It's worth learning it. Really nice looking and mature looking maps. We've got wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. No wireless CarPlay, unlike BMWs and Audis, however, which is a bit of a letdown. And even though there's no instrument cowl, the thing's bright enough that you can see it in direct sunlight, which is what really matters. Now these seats are actually shared with the GLB 250, so that's one thing where, you know, a proper bucket isn't really something you're gonna get in this car, but at least the black and gray uh, color scheme is something slightly livened up but i mean like you can get red which is a lot better um, but black and black or black and gray is is definitely conservative isn't it bit of carbon fiber um, that's kind of cool in this car i would say you get aluminium as standard but there are soft touch materials here on the dash oh sorry here's the dash these are the doors uh, and down here uh, on the armrest though as you move further down the belt line there is a bit of scratchy plastic lots of practicality though wireless phone charging Heaps of USB-C ports, big cup holders, tray between the seats. It's not bad, all in all. Now, the GLB is a clever SUV because it's a pretty compact seven-seater, but here in five-seat configuration, which I think most buyers will use it in most of the time or keeping that spare capacity in reserve, there's heaps of space. So for myself, it's six foot. Headroom's no issue. I've got another inch or two beneath this dual pane sunroof. Legroom's really good behind my own driving position. Tow room is massive as well. Plus, because the floor is effectively flat, you can actually get three people sitting across you without too much fighting. We've got air vents. We've got a little flip down panel with more USB-C charge ports. We've got a flip down armrest as well with cup holders, soft touch materials up on the doors. So all in all, it feels like a pretty posh place to spend time. And I think the kids will be perfectly happy back here. Now, what they don't have is any kind of tablet holder, which you would get in a Skoda Kodiak RS 
but you can probably find something that jimmies onto these uh, back headrests, can't you? Here around the back of the AMG GLB35, it really does look like a mini GLS, especially when you're kind of approaching it from behind. And, and that's a good thing, because I mean, it really brings this into visual similarity with a car that costs much, much more. Now, power tailgate, it's nice and quick. As you can see, with the third row up, there's not a huge amount of boot space. In fact, I'd go as far as to say there's pretty much zero, but the point is to be able to cram a couple of extra people into the back when need be. However, while adjusting those third row seats is an electronic affair in something like a GLS, here it's manual, but that certainly means it's quick and easy. Red tab, they're down. And then you have heaps of boot space. If you put those second row seats down, you get a truly van-like capacity in this nice blocky, squared off, traditional looking SUV, which is, you know, always nice. Down below this uh, little sort of bit of storage here, we've got the cargo cover. No spare wheel in the GLB35 though, so if you do a lot of country touring, that's something that you'll want to keep in mind. All right, so we've had a look at the interior and the practicality. Next up, we'll take it for a drive. All right, so the AMG GLB35, what's it like to drive? First, before I tell you, I think it's interesting to reflect on exactly what this product is, because it's not what anybody working at AMG would have imagined this badge would have been slapped on in 2020, but that's the way market trends go. That's where we are. AMG now make a two liter compact seven seater. And it turns out it's actually pretty damn good. Only a couple of minutes behind the wheel of the AMG GLB 35, I reckon, will have you nodding along that the ride and handling balance of this vehicle is pretty impressive. And that's before you've got into the capability of the engine, which is certainly not bad. What it isn't though, is a bespoke one man, one engine AMG motor, which is what goes into the uh, you know, GLA 45 or the C63 or the GLS 63 that we uh, also drove today. Instead, it's a tuned version of the Mercedes-Benz M260 engine. That's a two litre turbocharged petrol four cylinder. Uh, you know, in regular Benz products, it makes 165 kilowatts of power. Here in the AMG 35 series products, it makes 225 kilowatts of power and 400 Newton meters of torque. So it's certainly no slouch. And it doesn't even make too bad a noise as it goes. You know, it's kind of got that boosty, raspy exhaust note to it, a little bit of a boom as you change up the gears on the eight-speed dual-clutch automatic. It's, an, it's a noise that I quite enjoy. Yeah, like, I'm sure it's, it's partially, perhaps even mostly artificial, but personally, I don't really care because after you've been driving the car a while, I tend to think that in an SUV like this, whether it's artificial or real, just kind of blends into the background. Point is, GLB 35 is a pretty good soundtrack, and when you put your foot down, like, it goes pretty hard. It may be an entry-level uh, AMG product, but it's certainly fast enough. The all-drive system shuffles a bit of torque to the rear wheels in order to give you that kind of planted, four-square kind of feel as it accelerates. And, you know, all in all, I find it pretty convincing. Now, there won't be a GLB 45, at least AMG haven't, you know, said that they will be at this stage. I reckon that'd be pretty bonkers, and they do make a full fat 63 version of the GLS, of course, so I'm sure it's a never say never proposition, but for now, the GLB 35 will be the top of the range. And in some ways, it feels that way. This feels like the most resolved, uh, kind of most interesting GLB you can buy. I quite like the GLB 250, it's a good car, good powertrain, but here with the wick turned up on that engine, transformed to 35, it makes a lot of sense feels really good out on the road. So there's enough performance. Uh, fuel economy is okay. I managed about nine and a half liters per 100 Ks in spirited country touring. When I drive the car in town, I can let you know what it uses there, but it doesn't seem too bad. But it's really the ride and handling of the GLB 35 that makes the difference because the suspension on this car, at least in the comfort damper setting, feels perfectly balanced for Australian country roads, which are a pretty punishing type of road recognized globally as, you know, often fast and flowing, sometimes tight, but usually surfaced fairly poorly. And that's a challenge a lot of the time for European performance cars, and that includes the GLB 35, and yet it takes it in its stride with a really good balance of control and compliance, 
you know, you feel the road surface, you know what's going on beneath you, but it's just not uncomfortable or crashy. You get the sense that you've bought a performance SUV, but you're not paying a penalty in terms of a really uncomfortable suspension. And I think that's important on a car like this. And AMG have done the right thing by not pushing it too far in the realm of, of kind of unnecessarily hard. Instead, it's just a good blend. Similarly, the steering is actually quite engaging. There's not a huge amount of road feel coming through this wheel, but it just points the nose where you want it to go, and the ratio is really natural. It's, it's quite a quick rack, not stupidly quick, but definitely, you know, immediately as you move the wheel off centre, you are getting a response. That's paired to Michelin Pilot Sport 4S rubber, so a pretty serious tyre on this vehicle, meaning it will go where you ask it to go. Uh, and it feels pretty good and pretty natural and fairly intuitive as it goes. And it actually makes me think, you know, it handles a bit like a grown up pumped up hot hatch, which is a big compliment. It makes me think if I was in a Golf R wagon and, you know, maybe having more kids and you want somewhere to go, a GLB 35 after a Golf R wagon wouldn't be a massive disappointment. Instead, it would feel pretty much up to the job. And that, you know, I reckon it's a natural progression Mercedes-Benz doesn't really have a similar thing. Maybe the old uh, CLA 250 shooting brake, you could move up to something like this and it would feel like a nice step up. Uh, you know, that's kind of what this car is about for me. It's, uh, you know, it's the, one of these junior seven-seaters, a bit like the Skoda Kodiak. Personally, I reckon this is quite a bit better than a Kodiak RS, as it should be. It's, you know, almost $20,000 more expensive, but it's competent at the job that it seeks to do. It's fit for purpose, it's pretty quick, and it's much more fun to drive than I initially expected when I heard that Mercedes AMG were gonna make a car like this. Now in good news for family transport, it's also safe. We've got good lane keeping assist, which is pretty strong, and you want it to be strong on your commute, and then you can turn it off with one tap on the central touchscreen. Uh, we've got adaptive cruise control, which is pretty smooth, blind spot monitoring, 360 degree camera, front and rear cross traffic alert. So it's a pretty safe and secure car and all of that stuff is standard, which is great. So that's a detailed first look at the new Mercedes AMG GLB 35. Honestly, I had decently high expectations coming into this car because I thought the GLB 250 drove pretty well. The GLB 35 is a considerable improvement on that car. So if you want, is a reasonably affordable, in a relative sense, AMG seven-seat SUV, this is probably up your alley. It's definitely something I would consider if you were already looking at something like a Skoda Kodiak RS and didn't mind spending a little bit more coin for something quite a bit faster and actually more resolved as well. But let me know down below in the comments what you think about the AMG GLB 35. While you're there, make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell. And as always, thanks for watching Chasing Cars.